So guys, today I actually want to show you guys our orange hypo projects. But rather than just show you guys snakes, I actually want to give you guys some information on the video. Because some of you may not be sure of how the genes work in ball pythons. Especially orange ghost being a recessive gene. I just want to make sure everybody understands how the gene works. Now, this guy isn't what I'm going to say he is in this video. Uh, it's just because I don't have a head ghost. Uh, or a small head ghost, I could fit in the container at the same time with this uh, female ghost. But, and also that's the other thing guys, you're going to hear me refer to these guys as ghosts or orange hypos sometimes. It basically means the same thing. Um, it's actually preferable if you call them orange hypos though, just because in the snake world, a, a true ghost is usually something that is both hypo and either exanthic or anatheristic. Um, but for whatever reason, they decide to name this gene or this snake an orange ghost but now you see it a little bit more often we're starting to go with the name orange hypo so anyways basically this is the orange hypo and this we're gonna pretend this is a normal but we're gonna pretend it's also head ghost because uh, head ghosts don't look any different than regular snakes or like regular normals or uh, let's say if you have a butter head ghost it'll just look like a butter um, basically for the gene to be represented or for the gene to be visually present you need to have the animal uh, carrying the orange ghost gene or orange hypo gene on both alleles this one would have it on one allele but the other allele would be normal or regular whatever so because of that this snake actually could create orange ghosts but is not itself an orange ghost now what we have over here is an orange ghost or an orange hypo you guys can see that the snake lacks black um, as they get older it, it becomes more of a brown when, but when they're actually born it's kind of purpley the snake is basically orange and purple when they're born and uh, basically wherever there would be black it is purple and as they get older it browns out a little bit but there's actually no black on the snake uh, which is where it gets the name orange hypo from because it's hypomelanistic lacking the black or most of the dark pigmentation so um, again, this snake, because it is visually a hypo, that means that both alleles have the hypo gene on it. That means that no matter what you breed this snake to, um, all the babies will be carrying that orange hypo gene. So let's say I bred these two together. Uh, what would actually happen is because this is a orange ghost, no matter what, it's going to give off the ghost allele or the hypo allele. Uh, and this guy is a het, which means 50% of the babies are going to get the um ghost allele from him so my babies in the end should be 50 percent looking like her 50 percent looking like him now let's say this guy was not a head ghost or a head hypo he was just a normal and i bred him to her um all the babies would look like him and they'd all be able to create orange ghosts so hope that didn't confuse you guys too much now what i'm actually going to do is show you guys some of the hypo ghost combinations we have. Um, I'm just going to put her back over here. It's a little bit difficult to do this with one hand. But get the orange ghost back here. Grab this guy. And I figure we'll start with some of our adult hypo animals. Um, the one that you see the most often is probably going to be the pastel orange ghost because obviously um, all the newer mutations, when they were new, they were put with pastel first. So, here is a pastel orange ghost. You guys will see that it's basically the same kind of thing we were talking about. It looks very much like a pastel, except it's way brighter. And again, the reason it is much brighter is because it actually has very, very, very little black. And when these guys are born, this one's in shed right now, so it's not a good example, but it, they're much brighter than regular pastels. You can see, even though it's in shed, it looks real nice. And actually, what's interesting about the ghosts and why they got the name ghosts, I suppose, is that when they shed, they shed clear. You don't see any of the pattern on the shedding. So, this is a pastel orange ghost. Uh, very faded head. The blushing is real nice on them, and they're a lot cleaner than pastels. Uh, adult pastels at this size will have already browned out and they won't have very much yellow to them. 
So that was basically one of the first combos that was ever done with the uh, Orange Ghost Gene. And now we're going to see our Butter Ghost. And all these, they, they all stay pretty nice, which is a nice thing about the Gene. That's why I really like the Gene is because the snakes pretty much just stay very, very bright. Uh, again, Butter, same thing. It's going to be the same with all the snakes. They actually lack black pigment. Um, some of like the pastel orange ghost we just saw, maybe the orange ghost, it may look like it's black, but it's actually just a very, very dark purple or brown. So, um, yeah, this is the butter ghost. These guys actually look all right as babies, but I find they get much nicer as they get older. You can see it's just a very, very bright snake. And uh, again, this will be an animal that has the two alleles that are carrying the hypo genes, which is why visually it's a hypo. Uh, and obviously the butter gene, which is co-dominant, right? So that's the butter hypo. And we're breeding her actually to a super chocolate head hypo. So that should be really nice if we're able to make one of those. We shall see. And then beside here, we got one of my favorites, which again... And this is going to just prove my point even more because this is actually a black pastel um, orange hypo. Now, these are actually amazing as babies, but if you look really, really close, you'll actually notice that there is no black again in this snake. And if you would, and if there would be a snake that would have black in it, it would definitely be the black pastel, obviously. These snakes are typically very, very dark. But you could see that all the, um, the black was either replaced with purple or brown, like I've been saying. And it's just a very nice snake. This is one of my favorite snakes in our collection, even though she doesn't like me too much. Um, she's an amazing breeder. She bred her second year. So, um, This is a hypo that we maybe see a little less often. Hopefully I won't get bit. This right here is actually a chocolate hypo. And again, guys, whenever I'm saying ghost or hypo, I'm always meaning... Uh, orange hypo Right there's a couple of different lines of hypo not all of them are compatible But the one you see the most often is the uh, orange hypo You guys can see the snake is actually very nice even though it's got quite a bit of size to it um, It's still very very light Chocolates are very nice on their own, but when you throw the hypo gene on top they just really become amazing in my opinion so I can only imagine what that super chocolate ghost could look like if we create it. Actually, we also have a chance to um, make the uh, the butter chocolate hypo. So now I'm going to show you guys. Uh, oh, actually, there is one more, and you guys probably saw this on uh, this week's episode of Snake Bites. Or no, it wasn't this week, man. It was actually a long time ago. It's just, I've been watching some older episodes of Snake Bites. I gotta be very careful here because the head ghost female that this guy's with is quite mean. But right here we have our Enchi Hypo, and he is nervous a little bit. But uh, again, Hypo just seems to enhance everything you put it to. I haven't really ever seen a bad looking Hypo combo, and the Enchi Hypo is really no exception. Already a very light snake to begin with, then you throw the Hypo Gene on it, and Comes very nice animal. So we actually didn't hit on any this year. The pastel orange ghost that I showed you guys before um, was the baby that came from this guy. It was the only egg actually in the clutch, unfortunately. So now let's look at some of the younger animals we have. Um, I guess we'll start out with uh, Dylan's orange ghost black pastel. She just shed recently. The orange is just ridiculous on her. Um, these guys' as babies are just amazing. And then her brother, who is like super mean, that I'm actually not going to take out because he'll just bite the crap out of me. But uh, again, I keep saying again, but uh, you guys could really see when they're babies. There's no black on this animal. All that black was replaced with purple. Now, unfortunately, as the black pastel orange ghosts get older, that purple fades a little bit into brown. They keep some of the purple, but uh, th this is just incredible right now as a baby. 
If this animal holds on to that, it'll probably be one of the nicest animals I've ever seen. And uh, one of the things we may plan on doing actually is going for a um, super black pastel uh, hypo, which should um, technically give us an all purple snake because a super black pastel is all jet black um, and all the black should be replaced by purple, right? So that should look exceptional as a baby. But yeah, this is a very, very nice snake. Um, and then I guess we'll end with this guy. This is our one of our whoop well, one of our gems of the season of the season that apparently wants to bite the crap out of me. But uh, we actually have bred the butter hypo the butter orange hypo male to the orange hypo black pastel and this is the male that we got in that clutch um, of course because we were breeding hypo to hypo all the babies had to be hypo right because all the alleles that were in play had the hypo gene so the worst thing we could have got out of that clutch was a regular uh, hypo which we did not get we had just as many chances of hitting a regular hypo as we did of hitting the butter black pastel ghost or butter black pastel hypo and we actually hit two of them a male and a female the female was actually one of the animals we traded for to get our banana fire spider but uh, this is the male and um, you guys can see it's actually quite nice it obviously doesn't have that purple that punches quite like the regular uh, black pastel hypo but I have a feeling that as this animal gets older, it'll actually look better than the Black Pastel Hypo. Um, really, really cool what the Black Pastel Gene does uh, to, to basically anything you put it to. It really has a tendency to just give a nice stripe down the back and um, make the pattern kind of crazy down the side. But... Uh, yeah, really, really like this snake. When it was born, it was actually uh, very purple and almost blue looking. But this guy has been growing really well for us, eating frozen thawed rats. Right now, he's eating six, uh, 60 gram rats. So that's really cool. Uh, we actually sold out of all our hypo stuff this year. Um, people seem to really, really like the hypo stuff, which, you know, I can't blame them. They look just insanely awesome. But the only animal we have left that's hypo this year that we have for sale is this girl. And we may have some uh, adult head hypo females for sale at the end of the season. So that's the hypo stuff, guys. I hope I did a, a decent job of explaining to you guys how the gene works. Um... And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So uh, like it if you enjoyed it, share it if you want, and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Thanks, guys. Take care.